but I'll move right into the chickens and sort of just try to have a conversation, particularly, you know, now that you mentioned a school, thinking about having chickens, so many things come to mind. Um, so to kick off the conversation, I'll talk about that. Every night, someone obviously has to put the chickens away. Every morning, the chickens need to be let out. Um, things like changing water and changing food, you know, are, and cleaning up after the chickens is actually much more time consuming than I probably had in, initially thought. Um, but the biggest thing to me that would seem like the struggle with that would be locking up the chickens at night three, and letting them out 365 days a year, you know, uh, because at the farm we have someone who lives there. And so he's able to do that. Um, but you know, if, he, if he's unable to do that, I come back and forth. And so I know that's a big sort of time commitment. So I would imagine having sort of institutional chickens at like a you know, school or a hospital or something like that. Those are the, that's one thing that I would think would be the big challenge, even for your school. It's sort of a big time commitment. How do you herd them in? Uh, pretty much they just go in at night. Okay, for the so most like part. a cow, they learn it. They figure yeah. out where they're going to go, and then they, they, they're psyched because it's the end of the day. Yes, but chickens all have very different personalities. Sure. And, and I would say often big personalities. And so in a flock, there's going to be a few that no matter what, you know, just they just don't want to go in until they want to go in every night. And so it's work. You know, it's, if you have four chickens, it's probably just going to shut the door. If you've got 20 chickens, maybe the same. If you've got any more than that, it's you know you're going to be looking around with a flashlight, but you will quickly know the spots where you know that particular chicken is every night. And you scoop them up. You scoop them up. What our chicken guy does, and I should have put this on the tips. He gave me a bunch of tips to share with you guys, and we were trying to think. Well, what are things that we learned that aren't in the books? And one thing that he does is he takes the flashlight. And, and sort of shows, shines it in their eyes when he goes to get them at night. And that sort of startles them a little bit so that you can actually get them. You know, because as soon as they see you, oftentimes they'll sort of, and I've done this many times in my own backyard, trying to get the chicken off the tree. And the chicken will start climbing up higher and higher up the tree. Often I just say, okay, you're sleeping in the tree tonight. You know, you'll be safe up there. But shining the flashlight in his eyes is actually a really good, in the chicken's eyes, a really good tip that actually works for him catching chickens at night. So out of our 60 that live in our main chicken house, he probably has to pull in maybe three, four stragglers a night. You know, and often they're just busy doing something else or staying away from the other chickens by staying outside, things like that. And do you count them every day? No, we do a chicken census at the farm. So about every week, uh, sort of our chicken guy counts each different coop and how many chickens are in the coop so that we can sort of keep an idea of how many we have. We quickly learn the more you have, the harder it is to keep an exact count. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we had 25, it was pretty easy to know we had 25. And now that we've got 100, 107-ish, uh, it's it, we don't know the exact number. So why have backyard chickens? I think most of us know it's because we want good eggs that didn't come from halfway across the country or all the way across the country. You know, we want more nutritional eggs, eggs that taste better. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard of the term concentrated animal feeding operations, but someone at ServiceNet, uh, one of our vice presidents, shared a story of he was traveling with his family and they stopped at some sort of farm store and he asked the lady if he could go back and see the chickens, the big chicken operation. And he said she had this weird look on her face and was like, Terry has it. You know, like, and he was like, oh, well, we've got a few chickens at our house, we're familiar. So she let him and his family go back and he could not believe what he saw, you know, it was just cage after cage after cage with chickens in it. And then he described a system where the egg would just roll out, you know, from the cage. And that, so that chicken, you know, probably never saw sunlight, and that was their life. So that's the reason for backyard chickens, because who wants to get, have their eggs come from, you know, an animal that was treated that way, not to mention the nutritional value of, uh, you know, back, backyard chickens where you can control what you feed them. And to the wintering chickens question again, and all of this is different with your own backyard chickens because I have two chickens at home and they're very easy to take care of. And actually the way I did their coop, which is interesting, at least for a summer spring coop, this is what I would recommend, I think, it's going well for me, is I had an extra rain barrel. It was just for free on the side of the road, which was a great find because rain barrels aren't super cheap. But there was an extra rain barrel on the side of the road, so I took that at home 
and these are rescue chickens. They were being picked on at the farm quite a bit, so I sort of rescued them and brought them home, and now they have a nice, peaceful life. Um, so I put a couple of holes in the rain barrel. I created a door for it, you know, like just came up with a way to attach the door so it would hinge. And uh, I put two like of those cement blocks I got at the hardware store for like a buck each on each side of it, and then I uh, built them a run around that. And it works great, you know. It's got uh, during the rainy weather and all of that. I actually ultimately had to add. I got these two like braces and added something that sort of serves as a protection from some of the rain getting in there because I didn't place the holes perfectly. If I placed the holes, I probably perfectly. I probably wouldn't have needed to add that extra layer. But that works. I only have two chickens though, so it works perfectly. So wait, for the they two go chickens. in the rain barrel when it's raining or cold or whatever, and then they come out of the rain barrel. Yep. There's like a little fencing area type of thing. Yep, they go in at night, their shavings in the rain barrel, they go into the rain barrel at night, I built them a little external roost, so, you know, at night they can't roost in the rain barrel, but it's only just the two chickens, and then all day I let them out first thing when I leave, so around 6.30, and then all day they're out until we bring the dog in for the last time at like 10, um, so they use the roost outside, and the two of them, and it's a rooster and a hen, and so the two of them just nestled together in there, you know, and it's, it's really cute. And the two original ones were two hens that were both picked on together, so they were separated together at the farm. Uh, so eventually, it was just the two of them separated. So I said, let me bring those two home, let them have a nicer life. And then one left, and I felt so bad for that one, and the one that was left alone. <laughs> Because I let them fly out, because uh, they will fly out of your hen. So that's another thing about uh, out of your uh, runs. So that's another great reason to have a chicken tractor, which we should go head out and see. 